Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, that he saved a wretch like you and you and you and you and you and me. Because I once was lost. Past tense. I was lost. But, transitional word, means I'm turning a corner and going a different direction. I was found. That's amazing grace. It's God's grace. It's the best thing in the world, right? You get to know that God loves you so much that he saved you by grace. That you were completely lost, hell bound, wrong direction, and he intervened. That's the good news. So what is this grace, this limitless grace? Let me read you the Webster's version of this. It's free and unmerited favor of God is manifested in the salvation of sinners and the bestowing of blessings. Now that ain't enough. Think about that, break that down. Unmerited favor, that means you didn't earn it. Can we you have to dismiss the kids, I'm sorry. I felt like the kids needed some extra grace today. <laughs> But I'm sure if I leave them in here, the parents, I'm going to have to ask for grace from the parents. So, please, Christy Lilly, go ahead and take the kids. Thank you for being a blessing today. And let me just say this, too. For all of you who serve, if you serve, we just raise your hand. If you serve at his place, raise your hand. Hi, stick it up. Hi, come on. Look at that. Look at that. Look at all right. The people who serve to make sure that this church functions and flows so, so awesome. So, thank you all for serving. Now, I see grace as God's love to us. That causes God to give us, to give to us, when there is no merit, but a whole lot of demerit. Come on. Think about all the demerits, right, that we did along in life. But His grace, which was undeserved, was given to us. We didn't deserve it. We couldn't earn it. We couldn't buy it. None of that. You want, you want to earn it and buy it? There's a couple churches down the street that will teach that to you. But you'll walk out feeling just as empty and just as incomplete. Because you can't buy God's love. It's not for sale. It's free. His love is free. Somebody needs to get that this morning. This grace, this, this unmerited stuff, this stuff that we couldn't earn, it, it's, it's so free, it's so limitless, there's no boundaries around it. But we all want to live at some point, our subconscious grabs onto this, this old way of living, which is the law, which always has boundaries to it. The Old Testament is full of laws and full of rules and, and all this stuff. There's a lot to learn. We, we need to have boundaries and, and, and rules in life. But when it comes to God's love and God's forgiveness, there is no boundaries. We cannot put that in a box. We cannot live by the law in that. Because in that there is no law. And, and with the law, it's just, it's too limited. It's too... And we've been talking through this whole entire limitless thing about putting God in a box. And usually it's the box that we've created. Usually it's the box that we built. And we say, okay, God, let me, let me put you in the box. Oh, wait a minute, I need you. Uh, something's going wrong, let me pull you out. Oh, wait, I need some finances, let me pull you out of the box. Okay, everything's going good, let me put you back in. We've got to get rid of the box. Right? Think about this. In Him we have redemption through His blood. We're redeemed through His blood for the forgiveness of sins. That means all of your sins have been forgiven. Get your head around. Do you really believe what you say you believe? Because the word says the forgiveness of sins. That means past, present, and future. That's, now that doesn't give you a license to go and sin some more though. We'll get to that. But just think about that. All of your sins have been forgiven. From stealing the pack of bubble gum at the grocery store to whatever the craziest thing you could even imagine. I know me, I know my past, and I know the stuff I think on a daily basis. Thank God that stuff is forgiven. 
Check this out. He says, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Ephesians 1 7. According to the riches of God's grace. How rich is God? He owns everything, so he's pretty rich. That's some amazing grace. That is limitless grace. There is no limit on the riches that he has in that grace. That means it's extravagant. It's lavish. It's, a, it, it's, it's You can't put anything on it. There's no limit you can put to that. But we put this limit on, but you don't know what I did. I don't care what you did. His word says that he has limitless grace. He has limitless love. Which means you can have limitless faith. We've been going through this whole entire series about limitless faith, limitless love, limitless, you know, all this, this, this amazing stuff that is just, I want us to get to the place where we stop thinking that we have to live in a box, a box of religion. I like this knowing that my, I'm not going to fall. <laughs> By the way, thank you, David, for, for building our space. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to, well, just a few people. Just the elect. Just a few select. He says he offers that to all people. That's what I call limitless. All people. That means all the people before us, all the people in front of you, and all the people who were coming. He offers it to everybody. It has no limit. We've got to get out of this limited mindset. We've got to get out of this place of we think that, well, God does it this way. And God, who, who knows the mind of God? I love how it was written in Job, like, who told God how to do things? Why are we telling God, hey, you know what? You need to get in the box. You need to do it this way in our own thoughts and our own process. It's time you start really understanding that he is a limitless God, in his love, in his favor, in his grace, in everything that he... Christy Lilly was talking this morning. She had this poverty mindset. But God had to renew her mind and change her mind. And now she's like, you know, if God wants to give me $100 million, God's going to give me $100 million. Amen. I believe that... I told you this before, so... I know I'm kind of going off track, but just before I look for me here... There's a church in, in Orange County where I sat down with the finance guy. You guys know the story. Because we think that if we put a pencil in it doesn't, or, or, or some change in there, that God's not going to change our situation. <laughs> but see, this church believes that, that God is going to give them exceedingly abundantly more than they could, ever, they could ever think or ask. Because that's the limitless way of thinking. And so a man sits down and he says, hey, I want to meet with you for lunch. This is the finance guy. A guy calls and says, hey, I want to meet with you for lunch. They sit down. And the guy says, hey, what's, what's the, the debt of the church? Now, if he were to ask us that, I'd say, nothing. We have no debt. Big guy. But we have need. Okay? He said, what's the debt of the church? $53 million. Largest church in Orange County. Pulls out his checkbook and writes a check for $53 million. Why? Because God is living this. He was blessed to be a blessing. It's limitless favor. I believe in for our $53 million heart to roll into our church to say, what do you need? Amen. And then I can be like Nehemiah and say, let me tell you. <laughs> God saved Ephesians 2, 8, 9. I remember... I remember learning this when I first got saved. In fact, I had to memorize it. It was, for by grace you are saved through, but through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now that's the King James Version. I can remember in the King James. At the end of the day, here's what it says. God's grace saved me. I couldn't do it. I got nothing to brag about. Yeah. Let me read it to you. It says, God saved you by grace when you believed. When you believed. It means you came into an understanding, you came into a mindset that you were lost, you needed to be found, that Jesus died for your sins, 
And you couldn't buy your way to heaven. You couldn't pray your way to heaven. You couldn't say enough how Mary's to get to heaven. There's nothing you can do. There wasn't enough penance you could say. You couldn't light enough candles. You couldn't do all this stuff. It was by His grace and His grace alone that gets you to heaven. No other way. And it's by believing that, by coming into a, a belief system, because you had a belief system before. It's, it's renewing your mind, changing the way you think, and saying, okay, tell me the truth. For by grace you are saved. Period. Yeah. It's good. Not adding to it, not subtracting to it. It just is what it is. For by grace you are saved. And you can't take credit for this. Why? Because it's a gift from God. When somebody gives you a gift at Christmas, do you take credit for those? Well, it's because I'm so wonderful, no? They went out, or they went on Amazon, one of the two, and they bought you your gift, and they gave it to you, and they said, here you go, I freely give. So much more. Jesus said, here, I freely give. I didn't earn it. There was nothing I could do to get it. It was just grace. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we've done. God doesn't save you because you're so good. Because you weren't. And you're not if you're lost. You're just not. Think about the stuff that you do on a daily basis. I was listening to a song this week. And I'll just say the, the title is called Burn It Away. That was it. In fact, it was almost the entire chorus of the, the whole entire song. And I just listened to it over and over and over. And I was, as I was driving down the road, I just I started acknowledging that I was actually being impatient in my driving, that I was getting irritated with people's driving. That I, I was like, God, burn it away. Because I was not. Do you, under, do you understand? Like in us, we got stuff. We got junk. So if the junk is after, I'm saying, can you imagine what it was like before? There's nothing you can do to get it. In fact, the favor of God, grace equals favor. It means God showed you some favor. The favor of God, remember, is when God sets his grace or his gaze upon you. He's looking at you. He's seeing you. He's watching you. And, and, and any one of us, all of us, ordinary people, God's watching us. He's looking at us and he's seeing us for who we really are. And for reasons only known to him. At certain times in our lives and for his purposes. He looks at you. He's got a purpose in him. He's, he's, he's watching you and he's seeing you and he's just, he's just so full of joy. He's got this love for you. He's seeing even the little details of your life and yet he still pours favor on you. I'm telling you, many times it happens and you're not even aware of it. God blesses you. He pours out stuff upon you. He keeps you out of situations. He saves you from trouble. And we don't even acknowledge the stuff that he's doing around us. We're not even aware of it. Why? Because we're so 100 miles an hour. We got stuff to do. I'm, I'm busy. I got this. I got that. I, I'm, I'm stressed. I'm blessed. I'm, whatever it is. We're not even aware of the fact. I love that song this morning. I got breath in my lungs. Are you aware of that? Are you aware that 99.9% .9 of people in this room actually are walking on their two feet with the exception of one? Think about that. God's grace. You woke up. You got here safely. Look. It's raining. And people drive crazy when it's raining. Yet God protected you. He covered you. And he made sure that you would get here. Why? Because he's got to work for you. My preaching's not even that great this morning, but his word is. 
He's looking on you and he says, man, I just love you. You're the apple of my eye. I just think you're amazing. Why? Because you are. Don't let me tell you any different. Think about this. When a, when a situation seems impossible, grace. When there doesn't seem to be a way, grace. When you screw up, and we screw up, right? Grace. Think about what you did in the last three days. Grace. Think about your thoughts for the last three days. Grace. And think about the fact that even though you, you screwed up and you made some mistakes, do you know what we've got? 67 days now? No, 100, 107, sorry. I don't want to discount the 40. Trust me. 107 days sober. Amen. Can I share a little bit? If you want to talk about screwing up. <laughs> Ryan goes out of town. Out of the country. Out of the country, huh? Okay. She's got two little kids. You guys have seen them, you know, they're running around. Four bottles of wine later. Point three something something alcohol. It's about this close to death. Passed out on her, her uh, porch. Kids calling all over her. She's about dead, and the kids, the kids have needs. And yet she's singing in worship now. Amen. Amen. And she's an amazing mom. And she's an amazing wife. And just last week, she stood up here and told you, God bless her with a radical amount of money. Grace. That's all that is. It's just grace. Just because you screw up doesn't mean God loves you any less. Think about this. When your kids screw up, do you love them less? Why do you think God would then? Because when the unexpected happens and the blessings come and life gets amazing and the situations change and the circumstances change and you, you take a step back and you go, grace. It's just his grace, which is his favor on you, which means he thinks you're kind of special. Why? Because you're his son, because you're his daughter. He just loves you. We ought to be thankful for that favor. I, Amy was talking about that heart of gratitude. Man, we got to get a heart of gratitude. When we wake up in the morning, I thank you for the breath in my lungs. I thank you that I can see out of my eyes. I thank you, God, that I got all my limbs on my body and that I'm going to get up and get out, get out of this bed and I'm going to go do whatever it is you have for me to do. Thank you, God, that I get to serve you. Thank you, God, that I'm called, called by your name. Come on, bro, I can preach that all day long right there. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. you know, when I pray, I, I don't pray long, you know, hour-long prayers. That's just not me. I can tell you the majority of my prayers are thank you, thank you, thank you. Because i got a lot to be thankful for. And so do you. Because I live in grace. I thank God that I don't have to live under the law. Amen. Because if I had to live under the law, I'd be messed up. Because with all these tattoos, I'd be, I'd be screwed. And then I'd have to, like, I don't know, cut my beard off. And, well, Michelle wouldn't like that. And all the other 600 some odd Levitical laws that go with it. We, can you imagine if we had to live under the law? It would oh, mess that one up. Mess that one up. You talk about guilt and condemnation. You talk about, you know, am I coming or am I going? Right? I can just live by grace. Amen. Which allows me to be free, which means I can just be me. And I can receive from him, and he can just be him, and I can be me. And together we can just be, man, this, this amazing father-son relationship, and it's awesome because he allows me to make mistakes. And in those mistakes, grace. And in all the blessings, grace. And when I wake up in the morning with breath in my lungs, grace. The fact that I wake up and I'm saved by grace, come on.
I'm not, I'm, I'm purposely not trying to be all, you know, preachy today because I just want you to understand. I think this is an area where most Christians struggle. Is understanding, truly understanding and grasping the idea and the concept and the truth of God's grace. Yeah. Too often we hold on, we hold on to our past and we bring that into the present as if God didn't save us from that. He only saved us from a few things. What I read earlier, he saved you from all your sins. That means all your sins. It's not just he didn't go handpick and go, well, those seem like the easy ones to go ahead and save them from. So with those other ones, they're going to have to work on those. Yeah, we got some work to do. It's called working on your salvation. But grace covers them all. Yesterday, today, Manana. For all you Hispanic people. Tomorrow. <laughs> I got an entire Puerto Rican family in here. I know they understand it, right? Come on. I, you know, every morning on Sunday morning, I wake up and, and God gives me the downloads, and I just say, "Thank you, thank you, thank you. Keep it coming." Wait, wait. And, you know, I've got to bend the right stuff down, but I right, hung on to this one. I think what we struggle with as Christians the most, just people in general, not even Christians, that God's mad at them. Can I ask you a question? Who told you God was mad at you? Sorry. Who told you that? See, the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. What? Maybe it's not his voice you're hearing because his voice says, I love you. It's, come on. His voice says, for God so loved the world that he gave us. So what? He gave yeah. his only begotten son. Why? So that, that, that we wouldn't die, but that we would live. In 1 John 4, says, God is love. That doesn't mean God doesn't like, you know, I imagine just like a dad. I'm being, as a dad, I get this. There's some things that, you know, we do that probably is going... Well, there's another lesson they're going to have to learn. But, but, but he's not standing over you going, Kimberly, you're, 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 you're a bad daughter. I don't like you. I'm mad at you today. No grace today. <laughs> like, no soup, right? Yeah. No grace for you today. Take a flat that one any better. Huh? <laughs> think about, think about the... A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Stop being double-minded. Either God is good or God is bad. You choose. But I sing a song, and I, and I believe it in my heart, that he's a good, good father. See, if God is good, he can't be bad. That's right. And if God can't be bad, he, bad, he can't be mad. Do you think he's mad at your sin? He's, he's mad in love with you. You get this? Like he, it can't be both. It's one or the other. But see, in, in, our, in our flesh, in our human thinking, in our natural thinking, it's, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. I'm less than. No, the Bible says you are more than conquerors. See, it says that you are more than. It says, we sang it this morning, you have the victory. So if you have the victory and you're more than, who told you you were less than? You did. You put a limit on it. You put God in the box and said, God, I like being in this box. It gives me value. And you don't live out the entire life that God has for you. Because you want to stay in the box. Even Jesus was put in a box and he walked out. Come on. He said, you're not going to limit me. You're not going to limit me. You can't limit me. I'm God. And he got up and he got out. So why are we trying to put him back in? We might as well just hang him on the cross again too. 
Stop living a limited life. Start, let that stuff go. God's not mad at you. He loves you. He's crazy about you. He smiles. The Bible just talks over and over and over about how he sees us. If you, if you struggle in that area, go to the book of Psalms. Read David, the dude who screwed up all kinds of stuff. Okay. Cheated on his wife, killed some dude who... The, the, the lady's wife had a kid and all. You talk about dysfunction. You talk about screwing stuff up. But yet, God speaks about him over and over and over in his word. Why? Grace. Because he's not looking at the problem. He's looking at the prince. Come on. He sees him covered in righteousness. He doesn't see him in all his fault. He only sees him in his favor. Come on. Which is grace. If you did, I should get a dollar for every time I say grace this morning because <laughs> the reason why is because I want you all to get it. I want you to walk out of here free. I want you to walk out of here opened up to, to, to experiencing the goodness and, and the love of God. God, Psalm 145, 8 says this is God in all mercy and what? Grace. It's three of you got it. God in all his mercy and grace. There we go. Is not quick to anger. Hmm. How many of us are quick to anger? Come on. Really? Three of us? Seriously? Y'all need to get up here and repent right now. <laughs> But see, that just tells you you're not like God. Which means he's different. His ways are above my ways. His thoughts are above my thoughts. That means he thinks differently than me and he does things differently than me. But the goal is to be just like him. But here it is. Is rich in love. Is rich in love. God is good to one and to all. That covers all of you. And thank God it covers me too. He's rich in that love. He's rich in that grace. He's rich in everything that he does for us. And has done for us. It says everything he does is suffused with... Suffused means greatly spread, by the way. I had to look it up too. It's greatly spread out. In grace. I hope that you're getting this this morning because when you walk out the doors and the enemy starts to, to, to get in there, just say the one word. Call it grace. You can't get me. I live under grace. I don't live under the law anymore. Get rid of the box. You get in the box, as a matter of fact, because we're going to shut you in hell forever. Come on. Your past, your present, and your future are covered by the love of Jesus called grace. Check this out. 2 Corinthians 12, 9, he says this, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. That means it's enough. For my power is made perfect in weakness. My power is made perfect in me being weak. It's okay not to be Superman and Wonder Woman all the time. At least think that you are. It's okay to go to God and say, hey, here's, here's my stuff. I'll be a little bit vulnerable with you, God. I'll be a little bit transparent with you. You know what? It's okay because he already knows it. It's already covered. I love the fact that somebody like Jill can say, yeah, it's been 107 days. And go ahead and spill my, spill my junk. Why? Because she knows that it's covered. It's been bought for. It's been paid for. It's okay. And she's not living in, in, in that continued amount of grace. In fact, the grace gets even bigger. Check this out. He says, for my, my power is made perfect in my weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. 
It's like plugging into the wall and going, okay, I don't have enough power. Let me plug in. Wow. I'm Superman now. I got all the power in the world. Why? Because of my weakness. Because I rely on his strength, not mine. Pastor in this church, I'm weak. But in his power, I'm strong. I can't do this without him. That's why I tell you guys every morning before you see me walk around the building. I saw Carol this morning because I'm going for my walk. Because in my weakness, I declare his strength. And by the time I get into the other door, you better watch out. Because it's Jesus in me coming out of me. There's this song, and I made Michelle listen to it this week, because it's an old hymn. Joan, you'll love this. I don't want to attempt to sing it, because y'all. <laughs> grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Right? Well, cleanse, clean, pardon. That means I was sentenced to hell. I was sentenced to death. He pardoned me. Within, which means he made my heart right. He made me right. He cleaned it all out. Come on. Hold on. It gets better. Grace, grace. God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. It's greater than all your sin. So when you start thinking your sin is great, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Your sin is not great. It's his grace that is greater than your sin. It's His grace that covers it. It's His grace that cleansed it. It's His grace that pardoned it. Come on. Stop holding on to it like it's got value, like there's something shiny and you're going to get be able to get something from it. The only thing you're going to get anything from it is just putting the handcuffs back on and, and living a, a limited life. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us then approach God's throne of grace with what? With confidence. That sets me, that's a knowing, that's a strength, that's, I know I can approach the throne of grace. I told you when I pray and I talk to God in the morning, I approach the throne of grace. I go there and I don't go there going, okay. I go there confidently knowing that's my dad and I'm his son and I can go there and I can just say, here I am, Papa. Here we are, Daddy. Let's talk. I don't go there going, I wonder if he's going to beat me. I wonder if he's mad at me. But see, our programming, from whatever we experience in the natural, with our fleshly and humanly fathers, or parents, we take to the throne. Or we keep, it keeps us from the throne. Release that stuff and just boldly go. It says you can boldly go with confidence to the throne of grace and say, here I am. Here's my junk. Here's my love. Here's my conversation. And even if it's, good morning, I love you, that's enough. But go boldly and go with confidence that he hears you. So that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Check this out. The grace of God brings salvation. It teaches us how to live. And it gives us hope. The grace of God brings you salvation. The grace of God teaches you how to live. And the grace of God gives us hope. How sweet it is to know. And not only does Jesus save us, because that's good right there, right? We can just put a period on that and be done. But not only does Jesus sacrifice for us, but Jesus also secures us. Saves, sacrifices, and secures. But if you believe the law, you, if you want to live in the law, you can just discard what I just preached, okay? It's okay. <laughs> we cannot lose our salvation that is eternal in Christ. Last week I, I shared with you Antonio and I butted heads over some things. This had been a long time coming. But Grace stepped in. But I want you to hear the prelude to the conversation. Okay, so I wrote this out of a lot of pain, but God brought restoration. 
bro. Here it is. We need to speak life into each other. We need to encourage each other and empower each other. We need to stand strong for each other. I'm like a quick fuse. I'm ready to fight. I seem distant and polite, but I'm always ready to fight. I got these images in my head that always don't seek the light, but I learned how to fight. I speak his word out loud, even at night, stomping, stomping him into the ground. We tend to hurt people who we love because you and I were hurt alike. Tommy, you can't play the saxophone, can I? Maybe he's right. Where you hurt, I hurt because I've heard the bite, the condemning spite. You will never need a ministry. You need to grow up. Oh crap, here's the fight. Let me put on my gloves because he's in my sights. Jab, jab, right, let's go. I'm used to this. I'm going to show you that I can fight. <clears throat> or is it pride? Yeah, yeah, that's right. You can't hide anymore. You're in the light. Can I fight myself? Remember, it takes two to fight. The way you judge and make decisions before you ask ain't right. Do you even sympathize or empathize before you act out of sight? Is this his light? You didn't bring your book. You were going off of your head. But you didn't, even, you didn't even think to ask why. You snatch away what you give me in the blink of an eye. Who are you to judge me without even asking why? So now you see why I'm, I'm not so quick to believe the hype. You can't say one thing and allow the disease to plague your life. So I realize I can't grow by myself. I do need you. And I, and I do need you and people like you. I do love you. And I am willing to respect you, to encourage and develop with you. It takes two, it's a two-way strength our, against our sins. We can bend and we will survive without strife and all the spite. The way you give up, give up so easy, you have no hope and faith in me. It's gut-wrenching. I'm willing to meet with you once a week or once a month, but if I don't see a change, then I'm not going to waste my time. Whoa, who do you think you are? You don't say that to people. Calm down, Antonio. Relax. Remember who you are. How about I look forward to meeting you, with you, spending time and growing with you. I have no doubt in my mind that you are a righteous man of God, and I'm proud to sit down and engage and grow and speak with you. Ah, uh, is that the Tommy who preaches on Sunday? No, that's not him. That's the enemy who never sleeps. Or watches while eating a banana, watches while eating a banana Sunday. Judge, jury, and executioner. It's my church, my way or the highway. That's pretty cold hearted. You're not serving Sunday. What? Do I serve you or God? If you're telling me not to serve, you might as well say, don't pray, don't give your tithes. As a matter of fact, don't even show up on Sunday. It's easy to get offended and find ourselves blending in the mixture of discontent, contending about who's right or wrong. Well, guess what? I was wrong. But remember, it takes two to fight. I've had so many people to, to, to look up to, pretend to be there, and try to breathe the same air, but nobody understands. Everyone has plans, but everyone has to plan to deal with every circumstance that it has to come to, to challenge you, to grow you. It's not easy. But if you are called to, I can stand strong. But we have to agree to disagree. The call that Christ has placed on my heart, with you or without you, not with you. I'm more, more with you than without you. I'll be surrendered to God. He will create vast armies of mighty legions of warriors to stand behind me but in front of him to fight for his sons and daughters as being slaughtered by the enemy's poison, being made useless martyrs. I realize that I try to gain approval and appreciation. I try to measure up my situation, but it never adds up. I don't even give you your salutation. But growing up, I only knew impatience. People giving up on me only wasted my patience. So do you have time? Do you have the same attitude towards me? Is your energy being wasted? So here I sit today with an open slate. Let's start over and toss the dirty plate. Go ahead and speak. I'm actually waiting. people in your life who don't deserve grace. Neither did you. But God gave you limitless grace. So what's your trip? See, there's this thing about grace that it's a partner with forgiveness. It's married with forgiveness. So I know there's people in your life that you've, you've cut off. There's people in your life who felt like Antonio did, made you feel that way. 
But see, what it took was it took for me to drop my pride, him to drop his, and just sit down and talk. For me to listen, for him to listen. For us to come together and understand that we have an enemy, we have an adversary, his name's the devil, and he, come, he came at us trying to separate us. Because if he can separate the church, there will be no church. Come on. But see, I take it a step further because I walk in love and I've made it my life's mission and goal to walk in love towards people. And sometimes that doesn't look so pretty. But you see the rainbow at the end of it all, right? <laughs> Colossians 3.13 says this. It says, make room for people's faults. I know this, not getting this word forgiveness today really was, grace was the, the message, but the word was forgiveness. You get that? Some of you are holding on to some stuff that you've not, you've experienced grace, but you haven't let others around you experience that same grace. Because you're holding on to the bitterness like it has value. You're holding on to anger like it has value. You're holding on, you're holding on, you're holding on. How about if we just have a release this morning and say, i got to let this go? How about if you let your, your past that you've been holding on to, let it go? How about if you just forgive yourself? If Jesus lives in you, that means you have forgiveness living inside you. Why are you blocking it? When we don't forgive, we block blessings over and over and over. I want to live a life. I told you this year it was we want to live in, in, in holiness and righteousness. I just want to be more like God this year. So at the end of the year I can look back and say, hey, not too bad. That's the goal. It's not because I'm prideful, because I can say, you know what? I went through some storms. I went through some stuff. I encountered some people. But you know what? At the end of the day, I did what God told me to do. I'll let him tell me good and faithful servant. So what is it that you're holding on to that you feel like has value that has no value? It's been done. It's been, remember? You've been pardoned. All that sin. Maybe it's time you pardon some others. Just bow your heads and close your eyes for a quick second. I'm going to ask you a few questions. Don't be looking around. I just want you to just get right with God. Get real with God, really. First and foremost, though, if, you, if you're in here today and you've never experienced the grace of God that saves you, it means coming into a right relationship with God and you've been holding on to the past and you want to come into a relationship with Jesus today, will you just pop your hand up? I want to pray with you. But if you'll just pop your hand up, I want, to, I want to get saved today. I want to come to know Jesus today. I figured most of you are saved, so that's, cool. that's a good sign. Where else? Got it. Now, here's the real question. How many of you are need to forgive somebody. How many of you have to release some forgiveness today? Even if it's yourself? Come on. Come on. Just get real, man. Just let it go. See, when you put your hand up, it's just extending it to God and saying, I release this to you. Just release it. Release it. Let it go. It has no value in your life. It sets you free. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. I'll ask this very last question. If you're here this morning and you're, you're just struggling with the fact that you don't understand grace and, and you don't understand how much God loves you, but you, you want to understand that, you really want to encounter that, pop your hand up. I, I just want to encounter God in that way. I want to know grace. If you've never experienced it before. If you don't know it like I want to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Everybody look up. Here's the thing. 
hands all over the room. That's not because the preaching was great. That's because God is good. Because his word is true. He loves you. And so what I, Michelle and I like to do is we like, we, we like to make a declaration of things. When we, when we got back together, when our marriage got restored, we made a declaration that we were going to stand out in front of the world, the entire world, and tell them our joke. And tell them God's love and how he restored us. We don't hold anything back. I have nothing to lose. I've already lost it all. But by the grace of God, I regained everything tenfold. Only by his grace. And so I'm going to ask if there's a you need to release something. If you raise your hand today, I want you to come to the altar. And I just I want to pray over you. And I just want to pray with you. And I want to pray over you just to release this before God. It's your declaration to say, I no longer want to hold on to this. I no longer want this to, to, to keep me in a box. Today I release all of the unforgiveness. And once you release it, then we're going to receive grace. So I want you to come to the altar right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't let your pride hold you back. God, 
Not that you can't, because you can't just as much. But God's put me here to be this guy. The message is this, it's simple. He's not mad at you, he loves you. He's crazy about you, you the apple of his eye. And I want you to go and walk in that love, and I want you to walk in that peace, and walk in that grace. But more importantly, I want you to go share that with somebody this week. I want Now that you've received it, I want you to go release it back out. Because see, the people who you were mad at, or that you had all that unforgiveness towards, they need grace. They need to experience the same thing that you experience. Watch God do this. Okay? Because if God can do this and He can do this and my daughter's here, if He can do all that, watch this. If God can do all that for me, certainly He'll do that for you because He said, Paul, oh, not just a pastor, not just the leaders, Everybody. So, will you commit today? Will you just commit to go and release the love of God and the grace of God with somebody this week? If you don't feel committed to that, just raise your hand. Because here's what I expect I expect that God is going to use you in a mighty way, and I expect that we're going to hear a lot of crazy testimonies. When I say crazy, I mean crazy good. And God is going to just not only um, perform a miracle through you, perform a miracle in you. Think about this. I want you to get your head around this and then I'll shut up. Okay. Each and every one of you, me included, we're a miracle. That's right. Do you know that? Yeah. You are a miracle. You survived death. You have eternal life in Jesus. That's a miracle. Now go be one. Father, we thank you for this morning. I thank you for your grace. Thank you for the love that you have for us, God. It's so extravagant and so uh, uh, limitless. So now, Father, we thank you for what you did in here today. But more importantly, God, we thank you for what you're going to do this week in us and through us. I pray you just draw the people into us. That you would put us, give us that that. That strength that only comes in our weakness, because in our weakness we're going to go before these people and give them grace. We're going to feel weak, but it's your strength that comes upon us. I thank you for what you're going to do. I thank you for every family that's represented here. I pray a blessing in your favor on each and every one of them. I pray a double full blessing over their finances. We declare health and healing over each and every one of them. I pray an anointing of love out of everybody in this room. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm very